Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to get uh, the parametric and Cartesian equations of a line from the vector equation of the line and I'm also going to show you the connections between the three. So I'm going to show you the connections between the vector equation of the line, the parametric equations of the line and the Cartesian equation of the line. Okay, so let's call this uh, vector parametric and Cartesian equations of a line. So let's take a red pen and underline that. So in this case, if we're given so given a vector equation of a line. So if I'm if we're given a vector equation of a line of the form r equals a one i plus b one j plus c one k plus lambda open a bracket uh, a two i plus B2J plus C2K. Okay, so this is the vector equation of the line. So just to remind you, this vector over here, so the vector beside uh, lambda, this is what we call the direction vector of the line. Okay, so this vector here is the direction vector, so direction vector. Okay, and remember this vector over here, without that lambda, this is the position vector of a fixed point on your line. Okay, so let me show you how to get firstly the parametric equations, and then from the parametric equations, I'll show you how to get the Cartesian equations. Parametric equations, remember, are equations for x, y, z. Okay in terms of, in this case, lambda. So I'm going to show you firstly how to find x, y, z in terms of lambda and then from the parametric equations for x, y, z in terms of lambda we'll get the Cartesian equation and Cartesian is one equation only um, involving x, y and z. So in other words we'll be getting rid of lambda from the parametric equations to get one equation in terms of x, y, and z, known as the Cartesian equation. Okay, so here's the method. So method, and this is the method uh, to get the parametric equations. Okay, so let me underline that. So here is step number one. So remember, r is the position vector of any point on your line. So I'm going to let r equal xi plus yj plus zk. And what I'm going to do with that is, so um, I'm going to put r into the vector equation of the line. So I'm going to call that equation star. So uh, in step number two, so let's call this step number two, put R, that is xi plus yj plus zk into the vector equation of the line star. Okay? So if we do that, we're going to have, so if I put, replace the R by xi plus yj plus zk, we're going to have xi plus yj plus zk that is equal to on the right hand side a1i plus b1j plus c1k plus lambda into the direction vector a2i plus b2j plus c2k okay now once you've done that in step number three, 
uh, group the i, j and k terms on both sides. So on the left hand side we don't have to do anything. So in other words they've already been grouped but on the right hand side I'm going to group the i, j and k components. So let me show you what I mean. So firstly let me write down a step. So group the i, j and k components on both sides. So left hand side I'll we'll leave it as xi plus yj plus zk already been grouped. On the right hand side so I have two components containing i the a1i so we'll write that as a1 plus a lambda a2 and keeping i outside okay so that is what I mean by grouping them so I've grouped my i components plus if I do the same with the j components we'll have b1 plus I have a lambda b2 so another j component here okay so not only this j component we have another one here so b1 plus lambda b2 keeping the unit vector j outside plus and I have two k components on the right hand side so c1 plus lambda c2 keeping that unit vector k outside okay so this is what I mean by grouping the i, j, k components on both sides. Once you've done that, in step number four, okay, so this is the final step to get um, the, uh, the parametric equations. So the final step for the parametric equations, all we do is equate the coefficients of i, j, and k unit vectors on both sides. So let me write that down. So by equating the coefficients of i, j and k on both sides. So let me show you what I mean. So let me start off with the coefficients of the unit vector i. So on the left hand side the coefficient of i is x and that is equal to on the right hand side the coefficient of i is a1 plus a2 uh, lambda a2 rather okay so if I take a red pen these are the two uh, i components that I have on both sides okay so if I just equate the coefficients x that is equal to a1 plus lambda a2 okay so we'll call that equation number one now if I do the same with j so if I do the same with the j unit vector coefficients so if I take a green pen so on the left hand side the coefficient of j is y on the right hand side the coefficient of j is b1 plus lambda b2 so we write down y, that is equal to b1 plus lambda b2, we'll call that equation 2. And if I take this black pen, so if I do the same with the k unit vector coefficients, so on the left hand side we have z, that is equal to, on the right hand side the coefficient of the unit vector k, is C1 plus lambda C2. So C1 plus lambda C2, we'll call that equation three, okay? So remember, parametric means equations for X, Y, Z in terms of um, a parameter, so which is lambda in this case. So these three equations, X, Y, and Z, in terms of lambda, these equations here are called the parametric equations of the line. So let me take a red pen. So these are the parametric 
equations of the line. Okay. So that is the method in order to get the parametric equations. I'll explain the connection between the parametric and the vector equations soon. Okay. But let me continue from there and show you how to get the Cartesian equation. So remember, Cartesian means one equation for x, y, and z. So in other words, we need to uh, get rid of lambda in order to find one equation in terms of x, y, and z only. Okay, so. So in order to get the, the Cartesian equation, it's a continuation from where we left off. So let's continue on the reverse. So here's the method to get the Cartesian equation. So as I said, it's a continuation. So in this case, uh, in the next step, we're going to rearrange for lambda in terms of x, y, and z. So take each equation and rearrange for lambda in terms of x, y, and z. So, for example, from equation number one, if I rearrange, so let's call this step number five, so a continuation from step four. So let me write down the step firstly, so rearrange... equations 1, 2, and 3 for lambda. So if I take equation 1, so if we take equation number 1, so equation 1 was x equals a1 plus lambda a2. So in this case, x equals a1 plus lambda a2. And if I rearrange this, Lambda will be x minus a1 over a2. Okay, so that is lambda in terms of x, okay, uh, from equation number one. Now, if I do the same using equation number two, so remember equation number two, y equals b1 plus lambda b2. So let's copy that down. So y equals b1 plus lambda b2 and if we rearrange in the same way as we did here so in the same way if I do the rearrangement y minus b1 over b2 so when I say by rearranging in the same way what I would say is take the term so in the first in the first equation here which I've rearranged I've taken the a1 to the left hand side and divided by a2. So do, using the same approach here, taking a b1 to the left and then divide by b2 to find lambda. Okay. So if I use the same approach for equation 3, so equation 3 for z, z equals c1 plus lambda c2. So z equals c1 plus lambda c2. If I rearrange in the same way for lambda, so taking the C1 to the left hand side first gives me Z minus C1 divided by C2. Okay, so that's step number five. And in the last step, we'll call that step number six. So I have um, three expressions for lambda. So if I equate them, we're going to get x minus a1 over a2. That is equal to y minus b1 over b2. That is equal to z minus c1 over c2. So as I said, this is the final step. And this equation here, so this is one equation in terms of x, y, z called the Cartesian equation. So this equation that we ended up with is the Cartesian equation of the line. Okay. Now, 
I've said at the beginning uh, of the video, there is a connection between the vector parametric and the Cartesian equation. So if we look at uh, the vector equation of the line, so remember, this is the position vector of a fixed point on your line. So the vector without that lambda, okay? So this is the position vector of a fixed point on your line. And the vector alongside with the lambda, this is what we call the direction vector of the line. So if we look at that vector equation, so let me take a red pen, A2, B2, and C2, so include, so the coefficients of i, j, and k, in other words, in your direction vector, A2, B2, and C2, along with the signs, when you take the coefficients, this will match, in the parametric equations, this will match the A2, B2, and C2 here in the parametric equations. But also, if you go to the Cartesian equation, that will match the A2, B2, and C2 here. So all of these terms will match, okay? So this should be the same. And if I go back to the vector equation of the line, so if we look at that fixed point, uh, vector. So if I take a green pen, the coefficients of i, j, k in that fixed point vector, a1, b1, and c1. If you go to the parametric equations, that should match the a1, b1, and c1 here. And if you go to the Cartesian, so you need to be careful with the Cartesian, provided that there's minuses here, so if there's minuses here, providing that that's the case, that should match the A1, B1, and C1 here, okay? So, that is the relationship between the vector, parametric, and Cartesian equation of the line. So, if you know the relationship, you can jump from vector to parametric, or from vector to Cartesian provided that you you know the relationship or you can go backwards you can go from Cartesian to uh, vector or even from Cartesian to parametric okay so that ends this video I hope you found this video helpful and I hope to see you in the next video thank you